The following is a Much Music special presentation. You know, someone once said that everyone in the world is an expert on two businesses, their own business and show business. And the same thing could be said for rock and roll and music video. So I thought the best contribution that I could make to tonight's proceedings would be to give you, the viewer, a sense of the environment in which we operate. On the one hand, you have those people who think that television is empty. They call it a vast wasteland. They'll tell you that they watched an entire evening's programming and couldn't remember a single thing the next morning. On the other hand, you've got those people, and sometimes it's the same people who will say the television is so pervasive, so powerful, so subversive an instrument, that it will single-handedly lead to the decline and fall of Western civilization. On the one hand, you've got parents and politicians and priests who would like nothing more than to hang responsibility for a troubled society squarely on the shoulders of this channel. And on the other hand, you've got bright and articulate and demanding viewers such as this one who writes, it is with despair that I learned of the decision of much music to become a censor. It amazes me that a company that exists because it flaunted nudity laws in the 60s has the gall to turn around and do this. Obviously, your integrity has been compromised by your sponsors. Too bad that only the other half of my city, London, has Music Plus, where Mitsu is completely available for the public to see. We feel keenly our responsibility under our license, not only to reflect, but also to foster the Canadian dimension in pop music culture. And that's why we're cautious about squandering our access by going to the wall over one or two videos, which are in any case produced with a sly eye towards commerce. In other words, do we inflame conservatives and churches by playing Madonna's latest provocation or do we not play it and thereby create a new kind of consumer product for sale directly to the home? Perhaps the most important point that I want you to take away is that these questions are as fiercely debated here at the nation's music station as they are in your school. And I know that our work would be immeasurably helped if you went directly to your phone, directly to your fax, and told us where you stand. Hello there, welcome to Much Music. This is a special presentation, Madonna and Mitsu, A Question of Taste. My name is Denise Donlin, and you've just heard from Moses Neimer, who is the president and executive producer of Much Music. He said that we want to hear from you, and we do. So right now I'm going to give you our fax number, which is 416-591-MUCH, or 6824, and our phone number tonight, which is 416-870-7716. Later in the show, we're going to be taking your calls, and uh, you can fax us right now and give us your opinion uh, now or at any point during the show. Now, these type of issues, they tend to polarize people's views. And tonight, we've invited a number of guests who will represent some of these views. We'll be hearing from some of our guests shortly. And first, though, I'd like to say that on behalf of Much Music, the purpose of the show is not to decide whether or not we're going to play the Madonna video or the Mitsu video in regular rotation. That decision has already been made. What we will do in this hour, however, is try and give you some idea, you the viewer, as to what kind of process actually happens at Much Music and give you some insight into the kinds of guidelines and pressures that we are subject to. I'm going to do a quick introduction of our guests here tonight. Um, over here we have Sarah Crawford, who is the communications manager for Much Music. Michael Hollett, to my left, is the publisher and editor of Now Magazine. Mitsu is here, our artist. <laughs> Daniel Richler, a broadcaster and author. And tonight we had, had extended a number of invitations out, uh, specifically to the Director of Communications for the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto, who has um, 
not shown yet, but we still have an hour. In the meantime, John Martin, um, Director of Music Programming for Much Music, is here to represent let those me, views. Let me just say, if, uh, if you're out there, Des, uh, Des Burge, who is the, uh, as Denise says, the uh, Communications Director for the Archdiocese in, here in Toronto, was expected to join us. I hope he's okay. Um, I have some, uh, some correspondence from uh, the Hamilton School Board. I hope it covers the same kind of ground that uh, the Des would have addressed. Uh, I can't uh, obviously speak to uh, to his views, but uh, I can at least uh, bring you some of the, the paper from the Catholic School Board system. There you go. We'll be getting to all that later, but right now, in order so that you viewers at home can see what we're talking about, we're going to play the Madonna and the Mitsu videos. Please be warned, however, that the following videos contain nudity and might offend some of our viewers. This is Madonna. That was Madonna, Justify My Love. You're watching a Much Music special presentation, Madonna and Mitsu, A Question of Taste. We're going to show you right now uh, the Mitsu video. And once again, I remind you that the scenes contain nudity and it may offend some viewers. This is Mitsu.
Welcome to Much Music. This is a special presentation and you've just seen uh, the Madonna video and the Mitsu video that we will show you both once again before this hour is out. And I'd like to welcome right now Mr. Desmond Burge, our Director of Communications for the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto. And uh, I'd like to start right with you, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, what is your reaction to these two videos? Well, I didn't really like either one particularly well. They didn't do very much for me on the thing. I, you know, I just think they were in poor taste. They shouldn't be shown. They don't do any stimulation to your intellect, to your mind, or anything else. I don't think that they have much value. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go right now to uh, Mitsu. Mitsu, why did you make this video? Why did I make this video? Uh, first of all, I don't think it should be banned. I don't think, I want to make this clear in the beginning that my video is not like Madonna's video. I respect Madonna, but I don't think, I think Madonna's video is about, um, is about more uh, sexual fantasies. And my video is uh, usually using bodies as um, sculptures, as uh, it's very artistic, and uh, nudity as purity. And uh, my video is really not about sex. It's not about sex? No, it is not. Okay. It is not. Did you feel that, that in order to make this particular statement that you needed to include nudity in the video? Uh, excuse me, I don't understand the question. In order to make a, a statement about, about bodies and, mm -hmm. and them as, as an artistic expression, uh, did you need to make the people nude? Uh, well, yes. And I don't think it's, uh, it's done with bad taste. I don't think it's uh, sexist. And I think it's OK to show nudity. I think it's, it's uh, pretty much uh, more awful like for kids to show them violence than nudity, mm -hmm. uh, or to show them on videos sexism than nudity. I think uh, children don't have difficulties with nudity. I, I, for them, it's natural. Uh, maybe more um, adults have difficulties with that. Okay, well you can already see today that we do have two polarized views here. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do now is, is talk a little bit about much music. What happens here and why these videos aren't shown as part of our regular rotation. And I'm going to introduce you to right now Sarah Crawford, who is the communications manager for much music. Sarah, what's the process like here at much music? Well, first of all, I want to say that Mitsu says that um, people perhaps do have problems with nudity on television, and they certainly do. Um, much music is sort of caught in the middle of this controversy right now. We have half of Canada saying that we're prudes for not playing this kind of material. We have another very vocal part of the country, the Roman Catholic school boards of this province included, who believe that a lot of material we play is far too um, racy or mature for, for general viewing. Um, I'll just outline a little bit about how Much Music goes about choosing our programming. First of all, I think everyone at Much Music is against censorship. Um, having said that, um, as broadcasters, we are subject to certain rules and regulations to which we must adhere. Um, first of all, broadcasters are unique, I should point out, um, um, in the sphere of media, um, different than, say, sellers of books or sellers that of records, because we, in fact, license a public um, airwave. There, there's a limited number of airwaves available, and we are a holder of the license. So, so the government has decided that we should be regulated in some form. Um, much music adheres to the Canadian Broadcast and Standards Council guidelines um, regarding all of our programming standards, just as every broadcaster in the country does. We, we do nothing different than any other broadcaster in the country does. We use the same guidelines. Um, so at this point, I also want to look at the word banned and censored mm -hmm. and say that we are faced with the task of sifting through thousands of videos that come into the station every week, just as the CBC, for example, has to look mm -hmm. at a lot of movies mm -hmm. that come in to their very limited yes. number of movie slots. Yes. Um, so what we do is we try to establish some criterion, um, again, being bound by these guidelines. It's, it's a condition of our license, by the way, that CRTC could take away our license if they found that we were negligent. Um, so we use these guidelines um, to determine what to play. And they say things like, don't play anything that's too sexist, don't play anything that offends community standards. And it's this issue of community standards which we have to define every day. Okay, well Sarah, we're going to get a little bit deeper into the idea of, of community standards and, and what actually holding a license means. First of all, though, I want to go to you, Daniel. You're a broadcaster and an author. You've wrestled with these, uh, these questions before. Um, where do you stand on both the videos and what you've heard already here tonight? 
I'd like to say straight out that I happen to like sex, I like sensuality. I think it's important that we exercise sensuality as a part of our imagination and that sex and sensuality should not be considered as uh, mutually exclusive with uh, thinking, with being sophisticated, with being proper. I mean, for God's sake, without sex, where would we be? Uh, sometimes I wonder about the kind of change that the Catholic Church's attitude towards sex has changed over the centuries. If you go to Italy, where the architecture and the painting in the churches is absolutely frolicking with sexuality and with nudity. You go to the Sistine Chapel and you see Michelangelo's magnificent nudes all over the place. What's happened? Why have we gone off sex to the degree that we have? I always thought that it was a Protestant thing, that the Bible bra, as opposed to the Bible belt in the States, you know, was responsible for this. But I'm really surprised to see the way in which the Catholic Church seems intent on squishing any kind of sexual jollies. I mean, you want to talk about AIDS and the Catholic Church will prevent you from talking about condoms. It just goes on and on and it baffles me completely. I think that these videos are, are sexy, they're sensual, they incite me to think about things that are beautiful about the body. Thanks, Daniel. Michael, you as the publisher and editor of Now Magazine have been through a, uh, the, uh, the quagmire of censorship before her. Where do you stand on these two videos? Well, this is my video station. I'd run, run the videos. I think if the issue is uh, trying to keep sex off much music, that battle has already been lost. And, and sex is very much a part of your programming. And I, and I think that, um, that it's interesting that videos made by women depicting uh, uh, um, situations where women are at least, well, either in control or at least sort of not, not being dominated, not being sort of uh, subjugated to a situation, that that is where you draw the line. I think situations like this are interesting in that they do define, end up defining your station and I suppose our, our attitudes towards the country because the line is drawn here on videos made by women and on videos that depict uh, same-sex sex. Although on your video I realize you're kissing, it, uh, uh, there's a mirror involved, but nonetheless we're seeing images there's where people are the same. We're dealing with people um, of the same sex and this is where the line is drawn. I think we have to accept that a lot of, a lot of videos that do end up running it, um, gratuitously show women, you know, sort of walking scantily clad through the background while men sit there pounding out their guitars their guitars between their legs and their mouths wrapped around the microphone and um, I, I find that somewhat inconsistent and I also I think as broadcasters I would I think this this response is a little inconsistent with what you have done in the past because you know I think that much music is somewhat courageous and that you uh, show independent videos with maybe production values that are not as crisp as MTV would demand the programs like extend the mix you certainly should you know you show uh, people of color and you're, you're not you know who um, have thought that you would have run these videos and then uh, acted upon the response. I think that, uh, um, I think we, we don't gain by sort of under, underestimating our audiences, whether it's a newspaper in my case or, or um, television in yours. And I, I think that, uh, that you should have given yourself the opportunity to, opportunity to have been delighted by the uh, permissiveness mm -hmm. of your audience. And I think that's... Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, we, obviously, it's a judgment call. Um, our unfortunate experience is that whenever we play any kind of nudity on this station, we seem to get a tremendous amount of negative feedback, which to us is very dismaying and mm -hmm. disappointing. And um, it's also interesting to note that, um, just to clear something up for our viewers, we don't see anything wrong with these videos. We don't see anything wrong with them personally. We don't see anything wrong with them in terms of the guidelines. I happen to think they're very interesting, beautifully made videos. Um, however, we can't play things. We can't day part. We can't play things in the evening. So if we could play things in the evening, we would have no problem playing this kind of material. I just want to point out, though, that we have played nudity during the daytime and we get a hugely uh -huh. negative reaction and Mr. Burge over here is representative of a very strong reaction against that. He was we, mad at you already though. He we, was already objecting to what you ran and now you've stopped. Why have you stopped with, with videos I think produced the position by of women? The state, it's not produced by women because we do play mm -hmm. a tremendous number of videos produced by women and we do play videos promoting same-sex kind of sensuality and exploring that a lot. 
I think we just made a judgment call that if we played that, and it would be interesting to find out the viewer response mm -hmm. tonight, if we played those well, kind we have, of videos. We have response right here, and Mr. Burge is representing a great number of people out there who do respond to us, who do think that Much Music does play videos that are in, in poor taste. Maybe you'd like to, to give us some more information on that. Where do these feelings come from? Well, there were things, you, you, something that you said, Sarah, here right at the beginning, that people object to very much to playing in the evening or during the daytime, and that's because children and young people are, they, they would be viewing them and would see them, you know, and so forth. So that's... Uh, young that, children that, that's, are the product of sex. That's what, no, but that's what I think, that's what they don't, people object to that, first of all. You know, it's just very important, and particularly those, and that's why the school system is objecting, that, the, that the, for the proper formation of the child and so forth, that they, that they be educated, that their minds be formed and so forth, and that they be open to absorbing the values that will develop the child. You know, that in a person of age, like the, in, the, in the time of a life, there are three great passions that people have according upon the age that you're in. When you're young, it's lust. When you're in the middle age, is power, and when you're an older person, it's from the avarice or money. So you have to learn to control your passions on the thing. The, the key thing to all education and so forth like that is the thing of discipline. And you have to, if you, can, if you discipline people, if, if you're disciplined when you're young, then you have the proper form and so forth that you're open to development and proper development. You made a statement and so forth that the church is very, you know, concerned about sex and so forth to take the pleasure out of sex. The very opposite, the church has the greatest regard for sex and so forth. You probably, you know, and that. There's, there's a role for sex to play. They want to be recreational, not pleasure. No, exactly. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> there can't be, there's not going to be sex, there's going to be pleasure in sex. I mean, you can't, just, you can't, you know, take away any pleasure, pleasure out of sex unless it's terribly misused. I would think that well, this type of thing on television is the misuse of sex and so forth. Sex is a very sacred thing to be used properly and to be enjoyed. And it leads to all good things and so forth. It led to all of us here, for example, and that and our children and that. Mitzi, you obviously made a video that celebrates sex. No. <laughs> you didn't. Celebrates uh, human body. Ah, okay. Okay. I just want to say, you're talking about uh, giving the good example to uh, children. My sister is 11 and she was more shocked seeing in the news at lunch people killing each other and and now kids know uh, what's the name of the new missile missile uh, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's more awful but to one see leads and to the other. and also you were talking about uh, CRT CRTC before um, how come in Quebec we have the same CRTC, but my video uh, now, this week, on Music Plus is number one. How come kids all over Quebec see my, my video 12 times a day That's an easy and answer. they're not dead? That's an no. easy answer. That's an answer. The, the community standards, I think, are different in French Canada than they are in English Canada. You think. But I don't think. No, no. A, Listen, a I'm not speaking away. personally here, no, Mitsu. No, no, no. I'm talking about our viewer response. If we thought we could play these videos, mm -hmm. we would. Mm -hmm. But until we're proven wrong, we we have the unfortunate position of feeling our hands are tied. Um, I think one of the reasons we're doing maybe one of the reasons one. we're doing this show is to play the videos, mm -hmm. is to say, let's get them on the air late at night well, and see well, what people think. Because we right now are fighting a huge battle with a number of factions saying that much music should not play rock music. All rock music explores sens sex and sexuality. It has from the beginning of it's time. It's okay, Why sex. It's okay, this? sensuality. Why this issue? I mean, well, it's you, use, you use the word fight, and I think that's an appropriate word. And I think as broadcasters and people who I would like to think sort of advocate, sort of um, exchange of ideas, that you are obliged to fight this rather than surrender before the fight ever takes place. Absolutely. I well, mean, again, it's not, it's not a fight because not you've, you've pulled the video, you, you have never attempted to run the videos. Well, we're running them tonight. I mean, this was a well, very well, real yes, reaction. Well, it's a good thing for you that, you, that you, you're going to have a good audience tonight, I think, you know? Well, we probably and will have a good audience tonight. Michael, let's throw it back to you for a second. Do you run nude pictures in uh, Now magazine? And uh, if not, why not? Yes, we do actually. We have run them, and we've run it. We have run into um, conflicts when we've done it occasionally—not always, but on occasion—and we have sort of um, 
persevered, I guess. We've, we've, we've engaged in an educational process and we've spoken with people and we've debated it through and we got our papers back in the places that we weren't, they weren't allowed in. Yeah. And uh, it's been an exciting process and kind of invigorating. And I think you would have fun pushing this through, frankly. You know what's sort of interesting? When some articles ran earlier this week about this controversy, mm -hmm. um, we heard that three daily newspapers had to airbrush, or chose to airbrush the photographs that ran accompanying the story yeah, from your video. Yeah, but the news all showed the video. No, but these okay. are newspapers that chose to airbrush the photographs. They're not even regulated by the kind of body that we have to pay attention no, to. No. But that how come is all a the form of self-censorship self um, that I found to be rather hypocritical. That's why we make alternative newspapers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, frankly, and that and I, I mean, guess to I a certain extent, Much Music is a bit of an alternative rock station. We have a broader playlist and a broader mandate we than any other radio station like in the so, country I think does. You have, and that again, I mean, I have to ask our, our friend Des. Now, I, I certainly don't want to unleash any type of uh, inquisition, and I hesitate to use the word, but um, why, why, would you, why would you select sensuality as the issue? I mean, quite frankly, uh, when I watch Much Music, and I was watching it, you know, of course, tonight to sort of get in the mood, and I see things like uh, the commercials for movies like One Good Cop or Scanners 2, which are literally showing depictions of people being killed and murdered and having their heads blown apart um, in commercials. And frankly, beer commercials. I, I mean, this, this, this is a network that is aimed at a young audience, and you show beer commercials constantly. Why would that not be an issue that would concern you rather than sex, which is, after all, a beautiful thing? Well, that probably would be an issue as well that would you know, be concerned about that. But uh, sexuality, is, sexuality is different. I mean, you know, I mean, most people, I would think most normal people and so forth, is so, se with, with, you know, the urge towards sexuality, particularly in young and so forth, is the strongest passion and so forth that's in people. I know that's lusty in old people. people, by the way. Lust Pardon? You can be old and lusty. I want to assure you <laughs> well, on this. Well, so I don't, don't okay. give up on that. That's okay? right. I think it's really <laughs> worthwhile. It. But, that's, but, but, it's like, but that's the thing that has to be controlled. I mean, you know. Control a, young people's yeah. lust? Yeah, that's really? right. Really? That's right. It has to be controlled and what like manner? everything else because just to, it ha for the development of the person and so forth, the sexuality, because it's the for its proper use and so forth, it has to be controlled, particularly when you're young and that. Because you have to develop and to, to develop in order to, to you know, to make you take your proper place in society and and do and and uh, reach, you know, the the, the to develop the ability that you have, and so forth, and and see, sexuality is something that can run rampant very easy, and that, oh. and that, and it's like, so don't putting these kind of videos on and so forth is sort of more or less, you know, pouring kerosene on a fire. Don't you, don't you fear? Don't you fear a society where the the showing of a woman's breast can be such a uh, such a shocking and sort of powerful you image? I mean, I think you in think a it's okay to to show the woman with with a bra. You know, and high heels. This is okay for a woman. This is not a better image than showing a woman nude, which is very artistic. And, and uh, if it's done in, in the right way, I think it's better to show her like that than to show, show her with a guy playing guitar and high heels and very tight skirt and, and the typical wo uh, sexist image. You think that's better? Well, listen, it depends. See, there's all different kinds of people out there. Yeah. Some people who are quite normal and well-developed and so forth, and that they're healthy and that, they probably have no problem. There may be other people and so forth that who are very, who are sick, who are emotional, have problems, that that sets them off in the wrong manner. That's the kind of thing that, that some of that could probably end up leading to violence. Leading to uh, violence uh, against uh, women. And, and sh you know, the, the, this business, this categorization of normal, mm -hmm. not normal, is really suspicious. I mean, the, the control of sexuality resulted in the abuse at Mount Cashel, which is a hell of a lot more serious than some fresh ideas that teenagers might get from saucy videos. Violence leads to violence, I think, uh, in the news. It, uh, if you show violence, and in movies, if you show violence, it's going to uh, help more doing uh, violence and showing uh, violence than than showing uh, women women's breast. It's well, worse. Yeah, and a, you don't go thing. after the news. You know, you don't go after them. It's okay to. It's okay. Let's kill everybody. That, that's okay. That's okay, Fred. Predator, du, 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 du. but it's it's not okay to show a breast. Uh, this our is culture, not, this is 
I, I have to agree with Mitsu. Our culture has a long-standing aversion to sexuality, yet it permits extraordinary levels of violence in things like slasher flicks, where the formula that traditionally existed was, should a teenage couple in the movie engage in a little hammock necking, you know, at summer camp, uh, lo, they get a spear through the back. I mean, that was the retribution. And this is a formula that uh, is sickening, and uh, I, I just... Uh, I mean, one of the things that, that the people have got to come to terms with is that rock and roll is not only for youngsters anymore. You know, back in the late 50s, there was a whole thing that went on that's parallel to this argument that had to do with comic books. At that time, it was understood that comics were only for children. A man called Dr. Frederick Wortham made a presentation to the United States government in a book he called The Seduction of the Innocent in which he argued, since comic books are only for children, therefore comics should not contain any adult ideas. The law should always be successful, you shall not depict the inside of a woman's thigh, etc., etc., etc. The specious logic, of course, is that all kinds of adults enjoyed comics then, and they do now too. Rock and roll has been around for 30 years, and it contains a vocabulary now that expresses the passions of young people and of people in their teens and of people in their twenties, that has never happened in the history of the world. And what people find objectionable is that rock and roll now has the power to express the passions of young people, and adults don't like it. Right. Well, maybe we should talk about what people find objectionable. Sarah, maybe you should give us some, some examples of type of the response we've received. And sure. in just a couple minutes, we're going to show you the two videos again. And uh, while Sarah gets ready there, I'm going to uh, give you the fax number. Please uh, send in your opinions to us at 416-591-6824. Or phone us. Get on the phone at 416-870-7716. Uh, because we would very much like to hear your response. Sarah, what kind of uh, Before response? Some of the headlines that we've been seeing in the press lately, I just want to mention that, again, in terms of the broadcaster, um, we have a very real threat. Um, we are constantly have, having these guidelines held up over our heads every time these interest groups complain to the regulatory body about Much Music's uh, responsibility in terms of choosing its programming. And um, there's been murmurs um, by the regulator that if broadcasters are not being successful in self-regulating, then perhaps it will have to be taken out of their hands and done for them. And this, to us, is a very scary thing. Yeah, but um, let Music me Plus didn't do, didn't do that. Well, let, let me read some headlines. We've we just seen the headlines. Right right this is a whispered threat, though. This is not We've just, seen, we just seen the headlines while you were talking. Okay, there, stop the music. The Separate school board wants much music off base of cable. Ontario schools plan fight against lurid rock videos. Uh, Madonna refreshing in a sexist age. Obscene but not heard. Music Plus won't run Madonna video. Separate school trustees call for rock video ban. School board to petition ban on videos. Doxy videos immoral. Sex blasphemy, that's much music. Much music channel for taste of hell. Hip to be bare. Obviously, as we tree. mentioned right at the beginning of the program, these issues do polarize people's views, and we want to get to the phones and also to some of the faxes that are already coming in. But right now, we're going to take another look at uh, both the videos uh, for people who have tuned in late and give them an opportunity to see what we're in fact talking about here. Uh, and once again, uh, the following videos contain some nudity and uh, have in fact offended some viewers. This is Madonna on Much Music. Mitsu, you're live on Much Music. This program, this special presentation is called Madonna and Mitsu, a question of taste. And if you've just tuned in, we are debating that very question. Now, some of the facts that have been coming in, I'm just going to read a couple to you so you know sort of uh, the breadth of opinion that's out there. One of them comes from Hamilton and says, our society is still sexually repressed and paranoid. In an artistic medium, I am only offended when someone tries to define tasteful. Another one comes in and says, I don't understand why some artists, such as Madonna Mitsu and the Pet Shop Boys, feel obligated to show nudity in their videos. I don't see the need for a breast or a buttock to catch my attention. A well-made video should do that. Aren't these videos designed to be banned? After all, isn't it the controversy that's more healthy for business than even an often played video? Certainly in the case of Madonna, her scandals seem more choreographed than her dance steps. We're going to get back to that in just a minute. Um, this is just a sample of some of the press that Much Music has been getting. This is from Paul Jackson from the Star Phoenix in, in uh, Saskatchewan. He says, uh, whenever I want to witness close up the degenerate depths of degradation to which our so-called civilized world has sunk, I flick on Much Music television. This doesn't happen very often for one can see the rotting of our society just by walking downtown. 
After 20 years in journalism and visits to the cesspools of the world, it takes a lot to shock me, but one is truly unprepared for the wanton blasphemy of Madonna's latest video, Like a Prayer. We play Madonna on much music. We're going to go to the pho phones right now and see what's happening out there. Who have we got? We're going to talk to Mike from Richmond Hill. Mike, are you with us? Yes, I am. What have you got to say, Mike? Well, I agree with the Archdiocese that it shouldn't be played on much music um, for the reason that I feel that these sort of things should be sold in stores, yes, but for the private viewing of somebody in their own home. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, sex is good, but it's only good in the right place, and the right place is in the home. So you're saying... Not you, in, pardon? You want to take your freedom of choice a little bit closer to your pocket, that's what you're saying. I'd like to keep it where it belongs, okay. in the home, in well, the bedroom. Let's talk about that just for a minute here, because one of the things that is constantly talked about when it comes to the world of rock and roll, and especially contemporary music, is that there is an indeed a very sophisticated um, marketing plan that goes with all these things. And uh, Madonna was a case in point. There was a home video that came out just before Christmas, and a lot of people say that artists like uh, Billy Idol, George Michael, would produce two videos, in fact, sent one that's designed for the dance clubs and one that's designed for viewing. They usually send the dance one out first to try and generate some heat and some publicity and then give you the edited one later. Um, Mitsu, what do you think about the home video market? Are you going to uh, put this video out on home in, for the home market? Well, I, I don't think so. I don't want to anyway. I would prefer uh, much music to play my, my video. I think uh, if it can be played in Quebec, uh, if the, the, the man was talking about keeping that in the bedroom. How come in Quebec we don't keep we didn't keep that in the bedroom in the bedrooms and show it and it didn't uh, made all that publicity I didn't want all that publicity I I want my video played because I want um, my songs to be played on radio and the the best way to make uh, people um, uh, think about the song. And, and put it in their head, especially when it's French, is to show that video. So mm -hmm. I wonder why made play the Madonna purpose. video in Quebec. Well, ultimately, that's what happened in, in Quebec on Music Plus. Uh, the Mitsu video is played in regular rotation, high rotation, as I understand. It's number one, but didn't play week. the Madonna video. So now we come back to our headline: I is think there's um, a difference. It's also a question of taste. The other thing I'd like to point out is that, Mitsu, your video was uh, supported by VideoFact to the tune of yes. $9,000, I understand. Yes. VideoFact is an organization that, that takes money from Much Music and Music Plus to mm -hmm. produce Canadian mm -hmm. videos. And um, apparently there was some mention in the application that there was going to be a shower scene, but no, applica uh, no uh, talk about the fact that there was going to be nudity. In. Uh, well, the demand was done a few months, a, f uh, a few a few months in advance, so uh, we, we didn't know everything that we would show anyway. Okay, good. Um, thanks, Mike, for your call. That sparked some good discussion. Should we take another call here? Thank you. Okay, who have we got on the line? We have Anne from Toronto. Anne, you're live on Much Music. Hi. Hi. I'm, I have to say I'm very, I'm very much a fan of Madonna. I have a 13-year-old daughter. I went to see Madonna last year in Toronto. And if my daughter was in Toronto, I would have taken her with me. I really wish she could have gone with me. That was the night where all that controversy was about her, her show. Some mother was complaining about her, it being disgusting. And, and uh, I don't know, I, I really feel that if children have a strong role model in parents or guardians or whatever, I don't think they're going to be influenced. And it's unfortunate that a lot of children don't have a strong role model but that's my opinion, I have to say that. I think that if they do have a strong role model at home, they're not going to be influenced by watching a video. Mm -hmm. how, how would you respond to that, Mr. Bridge? I, could, I couldn't agree with that, you know. I mean, it's, it's ideal to have a strong role model, and I hope all children do have it. But even with that alone, I mean, I think that there, the damage can be done to the child's you know, mind and imagination that he will that would do you know just too much harm to them and that they have sexuality and that type of thing just presented in the wrong way i'm all i'm saying about thing i think sexuality should be presented in a more positive view that the, you have to t if that child children and children are aware of what a beautiful thing sexuality is to be used but not to be abused because the abuse can lead in many people they we're not all the same and we probably shouldn't all be talk talking about 
what I think you know mean that all people who are strong and are so forth can can accept that but those who are not and many people and those like that lady said without the role model those children may be damaged and so forth do a great deal of damage to their minds and imagination so that it hurts them in later life uh, my sister is is 11 and she was in shock by that video and how can you explain in Quebec every kid saw that and nothing changed in Quebec since I think a that. lot of things since when two months mm -hmm. oh in two no, months there's no well, murder a lot of things have before. changed a lot of things have changed in Quebec since two months isn't it more Not damaging too much, than sexuality like in, no I'm talking of a longer period of time than yes that, but yeah. but we're, we're nine years from year 2002 and I think um, things are gonna change and we have to accept that things should change as uh, such as there should be less violence Certainly. we should become more peaceful wonderful we should how come in 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 um, in France you know uh, breasts are accepted we can show breast uh, in, in in beach even and here we can't even show it in television how come how come here in Canada you can show Michelangelo's David in in a dictionary in my video you don't even see that uh, uh, all of that um, but we're talking think once again about community standards here Daniel maybe you'd like to comment I was gonna say in a what scenario <laughs> I was I was uh, I took the stand in a court case involving community standards I had to do with a punk group called the Daglo abortions four guys uh, were a nasty piece of work and who really were engaging in a an exercise that was patently offensive to some segments of the population. The reason why I was in court to defend their freedom to express themselves the way they did was because I recognized that the country is extremely diverse, that many people in many areas of the country hold different ideas. Now I came on very strong before, possibly even hostile, and I didn't intend to do that so much as to try to explain that we don't all share the same feelings that you do about how fearful about how horrible sex in the wrong hands or in the wrong words or in the wrong images can be. I put it to you that we are coming out of an era of Anglo-Saxon sexual repression in this country. You know, you look at the cartoons, Pepe Le Pou, remember Pepe Le Pou? He's the French character in the cartoons. Who have we got for the English? Dudley do -right. This is changing because the country now is a country of immigrants who are bringing values from Italy, from Japan, from France, from all kinds of places around the world that are changing our ideas about how damaging sex can be. And I don't buy that anymore. You see, society is too diverse. There are lesbian couples bringing up children now. You may not like that, but they are bringing up healthy children. There are people who believe, uh, Sky Gilbert, for example, a celebrated playwright in Toronto who happens to like s &M. You may not like that. I may not like that, but he's a pretty keen dude, you know, and he has every right to exercise his artistic prejudice in that way. Ditto for rock and roll these days. We all have our own def definitions, and the hard thing about community standards is that we are an enormous country, coast to coast. There's millions of us, each with different ideas. So now, well, may I just say that the problem is, traditionally what we've done is we've kowtowed, we've succumbed to the lowest common denominator, the most pure, the most laundered. Well, I don't buy that anymore. I don't see why the people who are the most prudish should have their way, because I'm offended by sex that is laundered and made clean and safe and nice and normal. I don't think that washes anymore. So, Daniel, does that mean you'd play anything that came in the door? Well, it's very difficult. At the very least, I'd like to argue it out the way we're doing here, and I think that's fabulous. And I think that many more viewers should have their say. There you go. Well, let's have a, a, a person with a say from the community right now, because that's what we're talking about is community standards. We're going to go to Angela from Toronto. Angela? Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my opinion on these videos is that I think they're disgusting because like people my age group like I'm 16 and they're just like the majority of us are just they're, like into exploring into sex and I think that if they're going to show these videos they should show with some protection or something because what like what kind of protection do you mean condoms like with condoms because they're just showing these people having sex they're not showing safe sex and like people my age they're like just exploring it and they'll just go do it and people catch diseases and they don't show anything like this well first they should they should put condoms in school first of all if 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 we can if we start talking about that, it's like playing Russian roulette. 
It's playing with Angela. Would you be happy if condoms were available in school then to see these videos? Some schools already have condoms in them, but some of these, you know, people they see these videos and they think, you know, hey, they're doing it without it. Why can't I? And it's just like teenagers our age group, like Okay, Mitsu and Madonna, they're already popular, so I don't see how they have to make these videos to make themselves, you know, more outstanding than others, because Madonna's been in, as far as I know, for four or five years, and I've been, like, you know, with Madonna as she, you know, went through all these stages, how she changed, and all this, and I think that Madonna and Mitsu are already popular enough, it, and they don't need any more, um, you know, popularity to be who they already are, you know, because I think they're popular enough, and they don't need to make these type of videos, because they have younger fans than myself, watching these videos and these parents see these children watching this and I don't think half the parents appreciate what they're putting on TV these days. Yeah, what, what's, what's this business about uh, every time we show sex it's assumed that we're exploiting sex in some way. I mean what if I made a video and it had to do with uh, stuffed birds or alligators or uh, you know or, or kite flying or something where people say you're exploiting kite flying to make yourself popular. No. In Mitsu's case and in Madonna's case they enjoy sex, they're celebrating or sensuality, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> nudity the beauty of the body, me. nudity, yeah, uh, fine. This, yeah. Why is that exploitation necessarily? I well people think it is exploitation. I have three facts right here. One one says, I am, from viewing the Madonna video for the first time, rather uncomfortable with the aspect of S&M portrayed throughout the Madonna video, with the fear of AIDS prevalent throughout the world, blah, blah, blah. The video is felt by me to be counterproductive. Another one says that they were distressed by the appearance of the group with today's discriminations, having two gentlemen with long or un cured hair, opposing the elder proper spokesperson, positioned, uh, by the way, she did like your video, Mitsu. Uh, hello from Calgary, to see or not to see, that is the question. I wouldn't walk across the street to see either of these videos because they aren't worth viewing. What do you think, Michael? Uh, how would you draw the line? Would you play video every video that came in through the door? You can never play every video that comes through the door, but I think, I, I mean, I think when you ban these videos, you are implicitly endorsing all the videos you run and I think that you have to I mean I, watching this evening today's uh, round of videos and I watch a video like Infatuation uh, by Rod, S um, Rod Stewart that is a, basically a celebration of voyeurism and sort of non-consensual sex basically a man sort of um, you know expressing his sexuality it and it's okay to show that mm -hmm. but I agree you know, it's not non-consensual sex I mean frankly I think that a being anti-sex and anti-nudity is in fact a deviant position and that is a position that I find repugnant and I think that in fact fuels a lot of the unhappiness in our society. I mean we are we are we are a repressed society. We're coming from that experience and I think frankly a lot of us would agree that the sort of sexual attitudes and the uh, violence against women and the somewhat tortured attitudes towards sexuality that, that our society uh, reflects are in fact um, a result of the repression we have engaged in. And when so would you play Madonna? If you were in this station where you couldn't day part, where if you put it on at midnight it would show at 8 in the morning when your kids were eating Cheerios? My kids were watching it with me this evening and they, uh, they thought it was fun. And they were, mo they were literally more upset with the one good cop. My, my, my four-year-old was enjoying the Madonna, Mitsu's video and Madonna's and was quite offended with the one good cop mm -hmm. commercial that you ran. And you know, I mean, we talk about the, uh, the time thing. I mean, have you watched afternoon television in this city? Have you seen mm -hmm. soap operas, for example? I mean, this is depraved sex. Mm -hmm. This is hopeless sex. There's we not a lot of point, love happening there. We make this point fairly frequently, but for some reason, people persist in targeting rock videos rock very unfairly. I mean, this is the 50s I again. I mean, music, in, in the 50s, wait. It was pelvises, okay. and in the People 90s, it was very dangerous. But I mean, do you know that in the 50s, story. in the 50s, the evangelists in the southern United States came up with a theory that rock and roll, the beat of rock and roll, was what they called an anapestic beat, which was the supposedly the inverse of the heartbeat that therefore uh, incited sexual arousal. And it's okay to show I mean, with the, 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 mad, the, 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 the mad paranoid theories about how rock and roll will rot your brain, you know, is Persist just, today. I, it we keeps see going. all the time. We see that all the time. We're going to go to Louise from Scarborough. Louise, are you there? Hi. Um, the basic problem I have is with the, the standards, who sets them and what the standards are. Uh, if we left it to the, the member of the Catholic Church there, we wouldn't be seeing anything. They would have total control over everything we saw, therefore everything we did, um, but I'd rather leave it to the people. I'd rather set my own standards. Well, Louise, I think we're going to get into a conversation here because 
What happens is because much music it has a license that's governed by certain broadcast bodies, that if they deem that we're not making the right decisions, and this is very much affected by the number of letters they get and the print uh, you know, columns they see all the time that say the things that I've been reading out here, they will no longer let us regulate what we play. They will want to step in. Sarah, maybe you could talk to that for a moment. I was just going to say that basically everyone here wants to leave it to the people too. I mean, all we want to do is play the largest variety of music which appeals to the broadest variety of musical taste and get as many people satisfied musically and watching our station as possible. If we think everybody wants to see this material, believe me, we'll play it. So um, that, yeah. The president of uh, Much Music, Moses Neimer, his first sort of broadcast, not earlier, earlier broadcast David venture Lewis. in city television was yeah. certainly got his name and I'm sure a lot of his reputation and advertising dollars out of running uh, soft core pornography. Again, so why, you see, now, that you, was and you played stayed on the air. He was not taken off the air, yeah. and now, why is it I can't now? speak for Moses why he's not for young making people, decisions now. I like but I think in terms of okay. community standards, that was accepted because it was on late at night. I mean, community standards are hard to define, and we all try to do it every day. You guys try and do it. Everyone tries to do it. You try to do it when you make your video. I didn't try to do, to do pornography. No, no, I mean, you video. try to no, no. define what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The CBC, to this day, will not accept condom advertising. That's community standards that work for you. you? They've perceived. Oh, yeah. Would you? Yeah. yeah. We're going to take uh, some more calls from the community at large right now. Now, I apologize to all those people who are calling in from across the country because we're taking them as quickly as we can. We're going to hear from Joseph from Toronto at the moment. Joseph? Yes. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm uh, pretty upset with this whole discussion from the callers that you've been getting. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, from the young lady that's saying that we should show, uh, you should show safe sex, I'd just like to make a point. First of all, the reason that we can talk about condoms and safe sex on television is because of these people that actually come out and show their uh, their true feelings and show these kinds of videos. Otherwise, we would be incredibly repressed. Um, I like to say something about I don't know if John Stuart Mill wrote on liberty, and uh, he's very much against this despotism, the idea that there's a community standard. And the Archbishop was talking about um, how everyone has to be raised properly. Well, he says that eccentricity has always abounded when and where strength of character has abounded, and the amount of eccentricity in a society has generally been proportional to the amount of genius, mental vigor, and moral courage which it, it contained. That so few now dare to be eccentric marks the chief danger of the time. Now, if we have problems with people showing their feelings and expressing themselves, because this is what this is, this is expression, this is not pornography, this is art. And I think it's sick that people can come on and say that this is pornography and it should be banned. And as well, uh, excuse me, I'm going too long, but we also have Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. This is directed to the directors of the show. And we do have Section 2B, which protects freedom of expression. And I think if they really want to try, they should talk to their lawyers play the videos, and if the CRTC tries to stop you, then you take it well, to the, court. The CRTC can't, because he said uh, that it was okay with Music Plus to show my video, and it's the, same, uh, it's the same CRTC. You're talking about art, okay? It's okay to uh, bring a kid to a museum and to show him nude, a nude by a, a, a good painter. It's okay to, to, to see that. And if you put a nude with music, which I did, I did, it's not okay anymore because it moves. Uh, and uh, uh, video is art. Now, we're 1991, it's art. Uh, we're nine years from year 2000, as I said before. And uh, I think, I think uh, it's awful not to be able to see a breast on TV. I agree with you 100%. And like you were saying, in France, they're much more open. And I don't think that the people in France are disgusting or that the children in France are growing up wrong. Just today on Entertainment Tonight, they were showing some of the commercials that they run in Europe. And they're much worse than these videos. Now, unless you're prepared to say that the Canadian society is much more balanced than the European one, then your claim, the claim that is being made by the Archbishop that society is going to somehow deteriorate if we start allowing children to see these these shows is ridiculous. It has absolutely no basis. It's the argument that's been made for thousands of years. 
and it's always the same one, and there's nothing that substantiates it whatsoever. Well, maybe you'd like to express uh, your argument a little bit, uh, maybe uh, again, more <laughs> strongly, put, put your <laughs> point of view across. No, I just want to clarify the point. First of all, I'm not an archbishop. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> a, <laughs> I think you should know I'm a lay person. I'm a parent and a grandparent, mm -hmm. and so forth. So we get that, uh, we get that point but straight. But you do represent the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> yes, that's right. That I uh, re represent the Archdiocese of Toronto, and I think the standing is, you mean, that they stress the, the, the moral values which it contributes to society. That the happiness and so forth you know, of a person is really a true to seeking the kingdom of God first and then all these other things make you will be happy so forth on earth. Uh, you know to exploit sex, to, to show it in the wrong way, to, to, uh, to abuse it and so forth, to, uh, to, to lead others, you know, to, to infuse others with it into their minds in an improper way. It does, it does a great deal of harm and damage. Does your television the Catholic have a, a dial? The, the, just a second, the Catholic Church, you know, it spends a lot of time picking up and a lot of resources picking up a lot of the, the, the casualties of, all, of this type of thing. And we spend up a lot of, of, of broken of young people who have broken lives, with broken homes, from violence in these, from the, well, from the many things that, that they have not been properly formed and so violent. forth. So go after the news. Yeah. We should well, do the, the same the, TV but, show. But it leaves. Look at it. With you the know, news. look at all. You trace behind those cases of violence, violence against women, these murders. Very often trace back in that those people, there's pornographic literature. I'm not there, promoting any, I'm not, not promoting any. Yeah. Well, they're trying to, but pharma, that's part of the, one of the I, same. Madonna's there is a good part. Catholic. I mean, she wears a cross and she's oh, yeah, dedicated her record to, to Catholic. the Catholic. That's it. And I think she's very, the only very, thing very, Madonna, seduced, only thing very about seduced by the imagery and the eroticism of Catholicism. The only, I think, thing, uh, the only thing Catholic about Madonna is the name Madonna itself. Mm. That's the yeah. same relationship. I, that I, is all. You just, you just being raised in, in, a, in a society where they don't know and they're afraid to be open about sexuality. Today, it's a much more open society. When you watch Donnie or any of the open talk shows at 9 a.m., they're talking about various kinds of sexuality, various modes of sex, various kinds of relationships, and children today are much more open about it and they understand it much better as opposed to 50 years ago when, because of the church, it was believed to be this scary thing and it's only done after marriage and in the dark and it's a disgusting act and... The church, never taught, the church never taught that it was a disgusting yes. act. The church never did. The no, church has always <laughs> upheld the teaching of sex that it's a beautiful thing. And it's, an, and it's the most beautiful thing that's part of human nature is sexuality. That's but they, they said it to be used within marriage. That's not the symbol you're portraying by saying that we can't so show it on tell. When, you, you, when you're trying to stop something from being seen, the image that comes across is that the reason you want to stop this is because it's disgusting and you shouldn't see it. It's not because it's beautiful. It sounds ridiculous for the church to say, this is beautiful and that's why you can't see it. Okay, I think that yeah. point's been made. Thanks very much, Thank Carla. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, one more and then we're going to go to Heather from Toronto. I just was it where we're all trying to find a common ground, to say the least. Uh, you have to be careful with the language you use because what you just did was equated Mitsu's video with pornography held, uh, concealed in cupboards of sex murderers. And you watch it because that's sloppy thinking. You know, you've really got to think that there is some room to move here in an arena of sensuality where there's a difference between pornography and erotica, where some pleasure can be had. And don't just say that sex is a beautiful thing rhetorically. You have to mean it too and be able to recognize beautiful sex when you see it. Moving, as Mitsu described. Oh, not sex, sorry, beautiful bodies. But, can, but I think that the next step we have to take, because in a way it's a mugs game to try to uh, foist our own moral values onto one another. We just you know, keep throwing the hot potato around the table. Let's talk technology. I'd like to know more about why it is that much music cannot play an adult video at midnight, as we've been doing on this thing, and therefore spare youngsters. Let's talk about why a satellite signal cannot be delayed for three hours in the West. Why, I mean, explain something to me. Why Moses, who, um, Nimer, who owns the station, has got a great deal of money, can't afford to broadcast four extra hours a day, for God's sake? Well, it's, it's, it is a simple question of economics. I mean, ultimately, the station hopes to be at a point where it will broadcast 24 hours a day, in which case, I am sure there would be a lot more latitude uh, for that type of programming. At the moment, we're on an eight-hour repeating schedule. We play for eight hours in a block, and then it repeats twice. So, unfortunately, right now, that's the system we're dealing with. Right now, we're going to go to Heather. Heather is calling from Toronto. Heather, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. 
Uh, yeah, I'd like to agree with Daniel. Rachel, I have a real problem with this association with these videos and violence against women and a misuse of sexuality. I think it's just the opposite. You know, I mean, we're all seem, we're also concerned about the effects on children of wa watching these videos, and I think it's far more damaging for children to watch, you know, like Mitsu was saying, uh, violence on the news and watch slasher films, and, and women are abused constantly in cop shows and, and in TV commercials. And uh, you know, I think I think children need a positive uh, image of sensuality, and this this view of sensuality is very positive, I find anyway, where women are are presented in a in a you know much stronger context rather than being objectified and rather being victimized and and uh, on the receiving end of voyeurs as 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 you see in practically every male you know rock video. Thank you mm. very much. This is, uh, your views are echoing some of the facts that are coming in right now, and I'm just going to quickly run through them because then we can get as much people's views represented here as possible, and then unfortunately we're going to ha have to wrap it up. Uh, and this uh, fact is from Los Angeles, who says, it's surprising but refreshing to see videos such as the Pet Shop Boys and R.E.M.'s pop song, uncensored on much. On the other hand, Madonna's video seems calculated for controversy. They talk about another couple videos on here, Warren's Cherry Pie. This is not a reason to censor the artist, but to disregard them, which is, um, I'm, much is very careful about using the word banned here because basically hundreds of maybe a hundred video comes in a week and banning them or choosing not to play them is simply not the same thing. Um, okay, well actually, yeah, they want me to take another call, so we're going to take one more quick call there. There's Helena from Toronto. Helena? Hello? Hi. Hi. Okay. Okay, the way I see it is that a lot of money and time goes into making these videos. The people who produce these videos know exactly what they're doing. And what they're doing is they're trying to provoke, they're trying to produce something that'll provoke, I believe, sexual feelings in the viewers to get them interested because they know that that's what sells and the songs alone won't sell without this. And um, Mitsu was saying that she, her video is all for art and everything, but I disagree. I think that she knows that it sells sexually because there's nothing really artful in there. She isn't showing, she isn't portraying the human body. I not like in a good way she's because the videos are done with um a lot of people together having sex and it i they're not, I, they're not having sex okay they're not having sex but they're insinuating that they're gonna have sex and it's not very pretty sex either you can see the same things in the vogue magazine no. same pictures but if it if it moves uh, uh go after the vogue magazines too you know wrap them in, in, in plastic paper because we see the same thing maybe more yeah but the reason you're doing it is because you know it sells uh, uh, I did much, Helena. unfortunately we were completely out of time here one last fact that just came in four minutes thank you there's people talking in my ear at this point. One fact that just came in, I think, is uh, fairly balanced um, in terms of the polarization of views we've seen here tonight. When it comes to censorship, there is no right and wrong. It is what the majority of people are comfortable with. I see the technical merits of these two videos, but I am not totally at ease watching them. The defect is in me, not the church, nor the government, nor anyone else. Who sets community standards? We do, right or wrong. I'm just going to take a moment to uh, try and very briefly encapsulize what your view is on the subject. Michael? Okay, again, I, my, I feel that being anti-sex, anti-nudity is in itself a deviant uh, um, attitude and I would not like to see uh, our standards defined by that attitude. I also wonder why people feel, obli feel obliged to impose their views on the, on, in these areas on people at large. Great, thanks. Michael Mitsu? Uh, for much music, I think it's easy to, uh, to say that it's uh, a community community standards you're the 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 channel who can make things change you are the one and i think you should maybe think about that thanks mitsu daniel i just think it's a mistake to immediately assume that because a person features sex in their video that therefore they're in some way exploiting it or trying to make money pleasure is pleasure and that should be an end to itself but I also believe that we, sh we have technology that's sophisticated enough now to prevent the youngest, most vulnerable citizens in society from seeing things that their parents don't want them to see. Thanks, Dan. Sarah? I think it's heartening to hear so much support for videos like Madonna's and Mitsu's, and I think as community standards change, and I'm sure they will, and hopefully they will, then Much Music will change its playlist accordingly. 
Well, I go back and reiterate what I said earlier, that I think the sex is the most beautiful feature so forth of the human body, of the human dimensions. It has to be, it should not be exploited, it has to be developed properly, and with that, the, do that, that we can develop healthy citizens and a, and a happy society. I don't think we have that now, because I think there's too much exploitation of sex that is doing the harm. And I'm very hopeful that we will strive for excellence, instead of trying to strive and settling for the lowest common denominator, which I think we too often do. So let's go for excellence for a change. Okay, thanks very much. I want to take a minute to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Um, uh, hopefully this will stimulate some more discussion out there in community standards land. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, and as you've seen tonight, Much Music is very interested in hearing what you think. And I'm going to put an address up here. I hope we've got one. Um, okay, to uh, write us at uh, Much Music, give us your opinions on a question of taste. Write us at Care of Much Music, 299 Queen Street West, Toronto, Ontario, M5R2Z5. I hope I read that right. <laughs> M5V, okay, 2Z5. One more time around the table. Michael, would you play Madonna and Mitsu? Yes. Yes. Mitsu? I would play mine because I think it's pure. But you wouldn't play Madonna's? Um, I don't want to talk about that I think uh, my, my role is to talk about my video I think the, the, the two are very very different from one one another okay Daniel I'd play both of them with pleasure and I think if people would not like to play them they should get their own TV station there you go Sarah I think the two videos are very similar in a lot of ways but that's another show and if I could I would I Daniel thought Bird? I thought yeah I thought Madonna's dreadful definitely wouldn't play it at all I could see some value, perhaps in Mitsu's, in in your in yours and thing, but I would be <laughs> it'd be difficult for me to play. It's no public, I wouldn't want no children to be okay. watching it. I'm going to slump a chord across the table. I, I want to thank. I supported Meach Lake. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Meach Lake. Well, we'll be back for Meach Lake next week, right here, around the table, one more time. Thank you very much for watching tonight, Madonna and Mitsu. A question of taste. Um, please uh, write us, fax us, and uh, give us your opinions. We're always happy to hear them, and we'll let you know what the reviewer response was at uh, some future time when we throw it all together. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs>